the whole soundscape and music goes through the lead character, Becky. Certainly watching it and seeing Erin, because her face is so amazingly expressive and informative. We are sort of living the experience of the drama through her eyes. The music and, and everything, all the interior sound and dialogue has to be what's in her mind. Even though she does some outrageous things, I don't think you ever want to feel that any part of it is, is judgmental about that. I think you just want to feel like you're going with it. The director, Alice Seabright, has been here. It's just fortunate for me to have somebody who's got a sort of musical brain. You know, it's her vision. She wrote it, she's directed it. So to have her available to get involved in the score has been super valuable. The main challenge has been finding the instruments that are appropriate. Alice got very fond of a vibraphone sound that so we've been using quite a lot because it's sort of mysterious, spooky, fragile, delicate, but also have a kind of emotional tinge to them. And I love that instrument because it already has a kind of sepia-tinted character to it. So that works quite well for some of the more flashbacky moments. We also love the cello because it's got a kind of, you know, deep, kind of guttural, emotional thing to it. Adrian Utley came and played some guitar. such a brilliant guitar player and so there are some tones and textures that are in there. There's been this kind of great mixing up of styles and genres. It is a, a thing of being gradually drawn in. You know, you just want to be reeling people further and further into the plot. There are source tracks for, of music that is being placed in there. But I think what we're doing is, is outside of all that. She's on this kind of roller coaster, isn't she? You know, to discover what has happened to Chloe, 